Uh, hello everyone. So welcome back. This is uh, Nepal, and in this video we'll be talking about process synchronization. So this is an introduction session. So yeah, let's get started. Uh, in this session, what we'll be discussing is I've mentioned it. So we'll just go through a very brief. Uh, uh, so this is just an introduction session. So we'll just talk about something called the independent and cooperating processes, and also we'll uh, see what all problems we have with the cooperating processes. So we'll also see some examples and uh, the problem is basically the race condition which we will go through. So yeah, to start off, uh, so in, in the processes we basically have two types. One is the independent process and the other one is called the cooperating process. Now uh, to see, uh, like to have a difference between these two, to understand what is the difference between these two, we can broadly see uh, with an example. But yeah, to start off with the definition, independent process is something uh, like as the name says, it is kind of like an independent process. So it does not get affected by some other process or uh, like neither does it uh, like kind of affect the other processes running. So just to take an example, let's see we have a calculator process. Now uh, this process can be considered as an independent process because uh, if you see, let's say there is another process called our, our music player. So the calculator process, whatever is running, this is like kind of independent. This never gets uh, affected by the other process, like let's say some music process which is running in the background. Or, yeah. So uh, neither does this calculator process affect the other music process. So you can do your tasks independently without disturbing the other processes or getting disturbed by the other process. So that is one example you can think of for an independent process. Now we can also talk about cooperating process. Yeah, cooperating processes on the other hand, these are uh, the type of processes which kind of get affected by the execution of some other process or they also affect the execution of some other process. We can again, uh, maybe we'll go through a layman example. So let's say uh, the task is dinner preparation and let's say we have three processes, P1, P2 and P3. Now let's say, let's say these, uh, these are parents and this is our, let's say our child. So the task of let's say the parent one is to create the main dish and the task of the other parent is let's say uh, this is create uh, this this process is creating some side dish and uh, the child let's say he is setting up he or she is setting up the table so, so this task is to set up the table now uh, so the whole idea like these are kind of doing some independent tasks but the main aim is to actually get the dinner set. So if the processes, whatever we have mentioned here, these do not coordinate with themselves, then it can lead to some issues. Now let's say, for example, um, okay, and also let's, th these processes, they have, uh, like they share the common resources, like the kitchen or probably the utensils. So all these are kind of shared between all these three processes. So they have to kind of coordinate among themselves in order to get this task done. Now let's say what is what are the kind of problems which might have uh, which might occur if there is no coordination among these. So let's say P3 has done his task way ahead of these two. So let's say the table is all set. He has kept all the spokes and uh, spoon spokes and all on the like on the table. But these two are still uh, let's say they are doing their tasks. Now P3 is kind of done with its task. Uh, and he has kind of like, let's say all the spoons and all that is kept on the table. So table is set. Now these two are still running. What might happen is these two processes might go and take the like resources from the uh, like table, which can kind of lead to duplicate effort required by P3 again. So P3 might have to again set the table. So that is one example where if there is no coordination among these, it can lead to let's say duplicate effort or there might be some kind of issue. So these three processes are called co cooperating processes because they kind of share some resource and uh, they need to cooperate among themselves to get this task done. So the main task is kind of same for everyone, but they have their own individual tasks to do. Uh, but yeah, they need to accomplish this one task. So they need to coordinate among themselves. If there is no coordination, it can lead to some problems. So that is one, like uh, some everyday uh, examples which I could think of. 
So yeah, we have kind of understood what independent processes and what coordinating processes are. Uh, but yeah, we can also take a technical example to understand more about cooperating processes and we'll see what are the problems associated with it. So uh, there is this con producer consumer problem, I think, which most of you all would have heard of. So the problem is like, or the tasks of these two processes is to, uh, so the producer process, the main idea is this process will produce something and the consumer process will consume whatever is produced by the producer. And these two will have a shared buffer. Let's assume there is a bounded buffer. So there is this shared memory which these two processes use. And this is of a fixed size. So the size is kind of fixed. Now these two processes depend on this shared memory and they do their tasks. So producer will produce something, put it in this shared buffer. Consumer will take the item from the shared buffer and consume it. So that's the whole idea. Now if we were to just write it like code wise, so producer, let's say, so let's say these two are running continuously. So the producer process will look like, uh, so it is running continuously. So producer, what it will do is, it will produce. So it will produce whatever this item it is producing. So this X it will produce. And uh, so let's say this is like a fixed size. Now let's assume the size is N. Now we'll also have a variable called counter, which will tell how many items are there in the buffer. So initially counter would be kind of zero. So what this producer will do is, now let's say if the, uh, if the buffer is kind of full, so then that means whatever producer is producing, it cannot put in the buffer. So what we can, what we can say is, so while the counter value is let's say equal to N, which is like, it, it is kind of full. So if that's the case, we will not do anything. We'll keep waiting. So it, it goes in an infinite loop, waiting for the buffer to kind of uh, get empty by at least one uh, unit. Now, if, the, if, if let's say it's out of the loop, so let's assume that the counter is not equal to n. That means there is some empty space in the buffer. So if that, that's the case, it will actually go ahead, put the, so let's say there is this put function. So it will go ahead and put the put the produce item in the buffer and it will increase this value of counter. So this is how the independent producer process would look like. Now if we talk about consumer, so consumer the idea is if there is nothing in the buffer, it won't be consuming anything. So that means if the counter is let's say zero, then there's nothing for the consumer to do. So if we were to look at the process, the consumer process. So these two are like running indifferent, uh, indifferently. So we have while one and consumer, what it will do is, uh, it will first check for the buffer. So if this counter is, let's say zero, it will have to wait because there's nothing for it to consume. Uh, so it will keep running in the loop. Now let's say the, there was something produced by the producer. So it had some value. It's not equal to zero because we increment the value here. If that's the case, what it will do is it will, let's say, take, it will take from the buffer here it was putting, it will take it from there and it will just decrement the counter by one. So if you look at these two processes, like independently, these two are fine. There's no issue with this, but, uh, if these two are running in parallel, then there would be a, there, there would be some issue because they are kind of having this variable which is shared between the two processes. This counter is kind of shared. So let's just see what kind of issues we'll have because of this shared variable and if these two aren't cooperating or coordinating with each other. So yeah. Okay, so if we look at that counter increment or decrement value, like uh, if we go ahead and look at the machine code for it. So counter incrementing, which is this and counter decrementing, which is this. So whatever we had. Now at machine level, the way this would actually work is, what you would do is, so there would be registers. So uh, the counter value would kind of be stored in a register. 
So what you will do is you will load, let's say, some register R1 with this counter value, let's call it C. So this counter value would kind of be stored in this register R1 and then you would basically do the increment of R1 by let's say 1. So R value in R1 would kind of be, so this is just some uh, pseudocode I'm writing. So what will happen is you will first load the counter in the register, then increment its value inside the register and then finally store the value in the register back to the variable counter. So this is how the machine code for counter plus plus would look like. And similarly for counter minus minus also if you see, it would kind of be same. Let's say there is uh, the counter value which we are loading in the register, then you would kind of do subtraction because you are decrementing and then finally you will store the result back. So this is how the counter minus minus would look like, counter plus plus is this. Now if you see, uh, let's assume, let's just go through the steps, like these two are running in parallel. So we can say, so there are kind of like six steps here, six unit or six separate steps are there. We'll just go ahead and uh, try to simulate these six steps, how, how they would look like. So let's assume, so this is our producer, this is our, this is our consumer. Now let's say producer and consumer both are running concurrently. So producer, let's say it loaded, so let's currently, let's say the value of counter is 5. So what will happen is, so producer would load the value. So R1, uh, let's just write this down. So if 1 is executed, R1 will now currently have 5. Now let's say, this, since these two are running in parallel, let's say that, uh, let's, let's just assume that uh, consumer also has executed this instruction. So R2 will also have 5 because both are kind of dependent on this shared variable. Now, let's assume producer ran this execution or this statement was run. So R1 will now be incremented by one and uh, the value would be six now. But if you see counter is still five, we are just incrementing the values within the register. Now let's assume this was also run. So R2 would kind of be five minus one, which would be four. Now, we still see that C value is 5, but the registers have kind of gotten updated to 6 and 4. Now, here is where it matters. Now, let's say, since these two are kind of running in a parallel, let's say this statement got executed first. So, if this got executed first, R2 will now have a value of 4. And let's say after this, this got executed. So, R1 is now going to have a value of 6. Now, this 6 is kind of going to be stored in C here, 4 would kind of be stored in C. So C would kind of be updated to 4 here and here C would be updated to 6. Now the final value, since this was the one to run at the end, the final value would kind of be 6. But in an actual sense, if you see, like we are just incrementing the value and then finally decrementing it. So the value should have kind of been the same, 5. But it here depends on which statement was kind of run at the end. So if it was this statement which was run at the end, then the value would have been 6. If it was this statement, then the value would have been 4. Which is kind of wrong in both the statements, like in both the cases. So here there is kind of a race between these two processes. So whosoever runs at the last, basically the value would, uh, of C would be of that particular process. So this kind of condition is what is called the race condition. And this is the major issue with the cooperating processes if there is no coordination among the processes. So yeah, so there are a lot of different ways to kind of avoid this race condition and uh, we will see how to actually uh, avoid race conditions in the future videos. So yeah, thank you.